Hello and welcome to today's webinar on IFS Shipment. My name is Rick Bucchino, Senior Client Manager with IFS North America. A brief agenda. I'll go through an introduction of IFS Shipment. Uh, we'll talk about shipment types and how you can introduce some automation into the shipping process. I'll go through some of the features and functions in an overview. Uh, we'll talk about uh, consolidated shipment, and then we'll go ahead and do a software demo. So first, to talk about what is a shipment. A shipment process includes a single point of entry for handling and delivering a shipment, including the printing of all necessary shipping documents. The shipment process enables proactive shipment planning and replanning. The process also enables you to create preliminary shipments containing quantities of customer order lines. It will enable you to create preliminary shipments for project deliverables. Once you connect a source line to a shipment, you can work with the connected source lines as shipment lines. The shipment process generally includes a number of activities and different stages. As part of the shipment process activities, you can initiate the shipment, connect quantities of source lines to the shipment, do picking and report picking. You can define handling unit and handling unit structures. You can create and print handling unit labels. That would be box labels and pallet labels, for example, and shipping documents. You can then deliver and send ASNs or dispatch advice. When a shipment is initiated and source lines are connected to the shipment, whether or not an activity in the process should be performed manually or automatically is configured by you. In addition, it's possible to initiate a consolidated shipment to manually connect multiple individual shipments. But we'll talk about this uh, on a future slide here. Just a quick depiction of the outbound logistics capabilities. Uh, as many of you as IFS users know, you have the order flow and order flow types as part of customer order. Well, similarly featured in the shipment, you have the ability to define the shipment flow by using shipment types. And using the shipment flow, some of the key benefits are that you can process multiple orders per shipment. You can also build up what we call handling units, which would be the, what parts are in which cartons, which cartons are on which pallets, and so on, and generate labels for those cartons and pallets and the, and the total shipment. You can also uh, initiate the ASN or advanced ship notice or dispatch advice right from the shipment. And the nice feature about shipments is that we can print documents in advance. So when we're preparing a shipment, we have the ability to print certain documents in advance, which will be beneficial. I'll talk about those in a little more detail. One of the nice features, obviously, in Apps 9 and Apps 10 is a lobby page. And there is one called Shipping Planner. Um, it's very useful for performing uh, the day-to-day -day tasks around shipment planning. At a glance, as a planner, I can see what I need to pick and stage for today, what's coming up for the next seven days, any orders or shipments that might be late, how many lines and shipments have been processed in, the say, the last 30 days, which items are ready to deliver, which, item, which custom order lines are ready to pick, and I can also see and manage my uh, consolidated shipments from here, too. So talking a little bit about the steps in a shipment, um, it's possible to manage the shipment of individual order lines, or you can manage the shipment by grouping order lines into a shipment ID and manage it all as one entity. So the reserve step, the reservation operation, can be performed for all of the customer order lines that are connected to the shipment. The create pick list also can be a consolidated pick list. It'll save you time uh, by uh, being able to pick multiple customer order lines in a consolidated manner, which is much more efficient. And then the report picking process, you can, you can perform the ordinary picking. You can uh, pick from alternate locations. You can pick with differences. All of that capability is there. 
um, in delivery. I can deliver a load list. I can deliver an order or all the, all the lines. And I can do that with or without differences. Um, you'll use the shipment type, which we're going to talk about in more detail here, to control and automate the required activities in your shipping process. So just a quick note about handling units. I, I mentioned this already. The handling unit structure is a detailed specification on how the parts are packed and what's included in the delivery. And a handling unit structure can be created per shipment. Once the source order lines are connected to a shipment, you, create, you can create, optionally, a handling unit structure that indicates how the parts are packed. You can print transport labels. That would be for boxes uh, and, or cartons um, and pallets. You can attach them to the handling units. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can initiate the advanced ship notice or dispatch advice via EDI. Um, transport labels can be printed in some different ways. You have the ability to print a top-level handling unit and all its connected handling units, for example, a pallet. Or you can print labels for single handling units, for example, the cartons. Or you can do labels for the entire structure, the, the, ship, the entire shipment itself. We're not going to go into handling units in too much detail in today's webinar. Handling units are covered in a previously presented webinar. So a little more detail about shipment types. Similar to order types for custom orders, the shipment type defines the flow of a shipment through the order process and, and which events uh, should, should flow uh, and be automated. The shipment type has flags similar to order type to indicate such functions as shipment inventory and online processing. On the shipment control tab, the shipment creation field specifies whether shipment should be created automatically or when releasing a custom order or when creating a pick list. Optionally, you can define consolidation rules used to define when the order lines are connected automatically to shipments or not. And the shipment type default is set on the customer master under address, order address info. And when you set it here, it will default to the customer order uh, when you create an order for this particular customer. Also, um, speaking a little more detail about the um, choices of whether or not shipments should be created automatically or not, this parameter in the shipment type specifies whether shipments should be created automatically when, creates, when releasing the customer order or when creating a pick list. The default value is not automatic. But this parameter will be defaulted into the customer order depending on the shipment type. So not automatic creation means no shipment is automatically created. And you'd use that setting if you want to really manually handle the process of creating shipments. If you set it to at order release, a new shipment is automatically created at the time of releasing the customer order. And, the order and, of course, all the order lines connected to that order. The created shipment is order unique, and it's only used for the lines from the release customer order. You also have the option to use at pick list creation. So when you choose this, a new shipment is automatically created at the time of executing either the create pick list for a specific order or, to, or if you do the create consolidated pick list. And then, of course, all the order lines connected to it would go into that shipment. So talking about shipment statuses a little bit here, three key statuses are preliminary, complete, and closed. We'll talk about that in a little more detail. So when a shipment is in preliminary status, new order lines can be connected. Shipping documents can be printed as soon as an order line is connected to the shipment. For example, there's no need to wait until a shipment is reserved or pick reported. Um, reserve and pick reporting can be done several times for the same shipment as you, as you add order lines to it. Um, order lines can also be removed from the shipment when you're in this status. And the package structure can be manually generated or automatically generated for the shipment. When the order status moves to complete, basically what we're saying is the shipment is 
completely pick reported. All connected order lines have been connected to a package structure. And then you move the status to complete. That pretty much uh, locks down the shipment from more changes. Shipping documents can still be printed if necessary. And when you, after you've made the delivery, you can initiate the ASN or, or dispatch advice. When the shipment has been delivered, uh, it can move to a closed status. And this is the final status of the shipment. The deliveries made are now available for invoicing using customer invoice, collective invoice, or shipment invoice. Uh, shipping documents can still be printed when you're in this status if necessary. And talking about documents, I'm going to give um, a brief description of some of the key documents that are available in the shipment. One of the first ones is a pack list. The main difference between a pack list compared to a pick list is that it's possible to print the pack list as soon as the shipment is created. You don't have to have done reservations in order to print a pack list. Once the shipment is set to a complete status, the pack list doesn't have any more details since all the uh, connected orders are pick reported at this stage. The next one is the bill of lading. In the shipment process, it's, po it's possible to print the bill of lading based on the shipment ID as soon as it's created. Even if the value of the bill of lading is still being uh, determined without a defined package structure. If any of the items on the shipment are classified as dangerous goods, which, which is done in the part catalog record, the system will also prepare a, a goods declaration that's printed with the bill of lading. For the delivery note, it's possible to print a delivery note as soon as an order line has been connected to the shipment. If a delivery note is already printed at this stage, it will not be possible to retrieve any information about the order line, um, weight, uh, tear, volume, and things like that. Um, if the delivery note is printed after the packet structures have been defined, then it is possible to retrieve the tear weight, the gross weight, the volume, etc. So in the first case, if no packet structure is defined, it, you get a delivery note with net weight of each line calculated and displayed, as well as total per shipment. But in the second case, if your package structure is now fully defined when you print the delivery note, it will have the net weight, the gross weight, the package volume per line, as well as total per shipment. So you get much more detail once you've constructed that package structure. Um, the consignment note is another document. This is more detailed than a delivery note in terms of uh, package weight and number of parcels, etc. Um, this report can be printed as soon as the shipment is created. It is possible to print a consignment note also without the defined package structure. But anyway, the consignment note ID is the same as the shipment ID if the report is printed from the shipment. If any of the items on the shipment, again, are classified as dangerous goods in the park catalog, the system will also prepare the goods declaration to be printed with the consignment note. And talking about the goods declaration, the data to be displayed on the goods declaration is entered on each inventory part. So part-specific data relating to dangerous goods is entered, again, on the part catalog. There is a dangerous goods classification tab. And again, this declaration is printed together with either the consignment note or the bill of lading. Let's talk about consolidated shipments. So it is possible to initiate a consolidated shipment and manually connect multiple individual shipments to it. Consolidated shipment represents a departure, or for example, a truck of several shipment IDs from your site to all of the different delivery addresses of the connected shipments. All of the activities in the shipment process can then be executed from the consolidated shipment, so saving time. When executed from the consolidated shipment, all activities that prepare the shipments for loading are sorted in load sequence order, while the activities that are related to unloading are sorted in reverse load sequence order, for example, the sorting of delivery notes. So just a couple of screenshots here. The consolidated shipment 
is, again, it's a grouping of multiple shipments planned for one departure, or for example, on a truck. You can monitor the progress of all connected shipments here. Uh, you can plan and execute activities on the consolidated shipment level. You have the ability to model and compare transport capacity, and you can use and maintain load sequencing. When you execute an activity from the consolidated shipment, you're executing this activity for each connected shipment. Activities to prepare the shipments for loading are sorted, as I said, in load sequence order, whereas activities you know, related to unloading are sorted in reverse sequence order. If you execute the command, for example, to create pick list, it will be a pick list for the entire shipment. To create a consolidated shipment, you need to use create consolidated pick list. Note that documents are still generated per shipment. On this tab, connected shipments, you get a good overview of the progress by seeing information such as pick list lines to report, uh, next step in the shipment flow, et cetera. And you can see the detail per shipment in the lower detail pane, or you can see a summary uh, in, in the uh, header panel. And again, in thinking about transport capacity, you have the ability to monitor this. And you can define this in a couple of ways. It is possible to enter a manual weight and volume, volume capacity. In the general tab, you enter a transport unit type, for example, a container or a semi-truck or 10-ton truck, et cetera. Then enter the ship via with a default transport unit type attached. And a really very useful feature is that from the available shipments tab, you select which shipments should be included in this consolidated shipment. And you can see, it's kind of a what-if scenario, you can see what will happen when it comes to utilization of the weight and volume before you actually connect them to the consolidated shipment. And again, some additional features that are pretty useful. The load sequence can either be fetched via load planning of a route, or you can enter it manually in the consolidated shipment. Activities to prepare the shipments for loading are sorted in the load sequence order that's defined. All print flags can be seen for each shipment, so you can easily see if there are any, any unprinted documents. It is possible to block entire consolidated shipment from automatic addition of more lines. In this way, once the content is determined, you can finalize whatever is connected. And each individual shipment can get a shipment location defaulted from the supply chain matrix or site, which I'll show you in the demo. The shipment location is the place where the parts are gathered or staged after picking, but before loading. If all shipments have the same shipment location, this will also be the shipment location of the consolidated shipment that you'd see in the general tab. So with that, let's go ahead and show you the software with a demonstration. Okay, for today's demo, I'm going to go through the shipment process. And here's a graphical depiction of the process overview, you can see in blue, that's the main flow of the shipping process. And we can configure how automated this process will be based on the shipment type. And we can have different shipment types for different situations. And then also what you see here is examples of optional activities that can be executed during the main flow. Those are uh, visualized here in the white boxes. So in this example, You'll notice when a pick list is created, the shipment is set to be blocked for addition of more order lines. That's an option that you can choose. And then you also see options to use shipment inventory and approve before delivery are also depicted in this flow. So what I'm going to do in the demo, I'm going to use a basic order flow, but in the shipment flow, you'll see the process where I will create the pick list and from the shipment and then process through there. So here's the, the live application. I'm using IFS Applications 10 and I'm using a lobby page here called Shipping Planner Outbound. And I configured this page on the right side 
you'll notice that I'm using the function that's called my elements. And what I'm going to do is drive the demo from here. I created a series of shortcuts to the different screens that I want to uh, discuss and, and show you in this demonstration. One of the first things I want to mention is we'll drill down to the order types. Those of you familiar with IFS, uh, custom order module are very familiar with the order types. Basic data, I set up an order type here called RB1, and I've got stop after every, every event. But what you're going to see is that in reality, what's going to happen is the shipment flow is going to take over. So let's take a look at that. When we are setting up the, the basic data for shipping, we have to create, one of the first things we have to create is a shipment type. And what I've done here is created one called RB1 for this demo. And you see the stop after events. So I'm going to stop the process after reserving. I'll manually create pick list. It will, it will flow through to automatically print the pick list and stop. Then I'll have to do the report picking step. That'll flow through once I report the picking to complete the shipment and stop there. Then you'll do a, I'll do a manual deliver step, and then that'll flow through and close the shipment. So that's the basic things that are done here. And as I click through these shipping events, you'll notice down below we have optional events. So on the create pick list, I have added two optional events. I've got release quantity not reserved set and block for automatic connection set. And this is the one, the block for automatic connection is the, the control that's going to stop us from adding uh, additional order lines to the shipment. So once I've created a pick list, I'm in essence locking down that shipment saying no more automatic connection. It is possible to do manual connection, but automatic connection won't occur. And as we look down through these, you'll see I've got on the report picking, I have some additional optional events. Again, release quantity not reserved. That would be if I, if I have reported picking with differences, it'll release the, uh, any other reserved quantity, if there in fact are any. And then I've got the optional event when I report picking that I will pack according to packing instruction. We're going to talk about that in more detail. And then I've also got print handling unit labels. So the handling unit labels are those labels that would go on boxes and pallets and on the whole shipment itself. And then on when I get to the complete step, I've got print pro forma invoice and print shipment delivery note as optional events. I've got nothing on deliver and then on nothing on close. So that's on the shipment events, the setup there. When you go to the shipment control tab, you've got some more things to think about here. You can require confirmation of the shipment location. That would be the shipment location of the inventory where you've staged the inventory for shipment. I've got online processing turned on. So instead of when I'm doing these transactions that it will uh, process online, and it'll give the user immediate feedback in that case. Um, but you can also deselect that box and it'll do background processing. I've got the option to approve before delivery. So this is something that you can choose in the process to have a step to review everything before you deliver. And it gives you the opportunity to make any corrections at that stage. It, again, that's optional. And then shipment, shipment creation. When does the shipment ID itself get created? And I've got, and, and this is thinking about the customer order flow. When I create pick list, that is when the shipment ID will be created. And then you can see the different options here. Not automatic. That means it's, it'll never automatically create, that you'll always manually create it. Or you could do it at order release. That means when the customer order is released, it would create the shipment ID. Or at pickless creation. That's what we're going to use for today's demonstration. Then you've got some consolidation parameters. And the idea here is if I've got multiple customer orders, I can 
choose to consolidate shipment by forwarder, by planned ship date, or by order number. Source reference one in this case means order number. And then you've got another tab, source specific events. I just took the defaults here. I didn't add anything for that. So that's the basic setup for shipment type. Let's go back to my lobby page and we'll drive from there. A little bit more uh, setup that I've done for today's demo. Uh, I set up shipment locations. These are inventory locations within my site. I, I've referred to them as Doc A, Doc B, and Doc C. And these are areas where I plan to stage inventory for shipment. So we're going to use these shipment locations in my flow today. Some more basic data that I set up. Uh, once I defined my shipment type, if we go ahead and look at my customer master record, so here's the customer master. If I go into the address tab under order address info, info you'll see shipment type. And this is where I have connected the, the shipment type that I just showed you in the, in the uh, basic data. I've connected that to the customer address. So specific to this address identity one, I'm going to use shipment type RB1. And uh, there is uh, some other basic data refer in the, in the customer master. Here on the order tab under miscellaneous customer info, I have the order type itself, which is upon creation of the customer order, which order type do I want? Um, so I'm choosing my demo order type RB1 in this case. And let's go back again to my lobby page. And I'll show you a little bit more setup. Referring to package instruction. So this is the way that we tell the system how should we pack the parts in what kind of boxes and what kind of pallets and how many boxes per pallet, et cetera. So the first thing is I need to say what kind of box should these parts be packed in. And this is done on the part catalog record. And I've got three parts here for today's demo. I've got demo part X001, 002, and 003. I've got a net weight defined. So I'm saying that my parts, each one of them weighs 10 pounds a piece. And in the handling unit capacity tab on part catalog, here's where I define what kind of box should I use. And, and you set up these handling unit types in your, in your basic data. That was covered under another previous webinar that we had. But here I've got a medium box and I'm I'm advising that I can put 10 of these parts in a medium box. And so we, you're going to see that in the next step. If we go back again to my lobby page and drilling down to the packing instruction, here I've set up a packing instruction called RB Demo 1. And this is eight medium boxes per pallet. So I define what my structure looks like. And here I've got a pallet, a 48 by 48 pallet, and I have one of those. And you'll notice that when I click this pallet line down below, I've got accessories, and you can have one or more accessories. And accessories are things like lids, corner boards, maybe, maybe you even want to list um, strapping or, or things like that. But you, this is where you list the pallet accessories. And it's especially important if they have, you know, significant, uh, you know, some amount of weight that would uh, contribute to the overall shipment weight. But anyway, I've got a pallet. And then on the second line or second level of this packing instruction, I've said I've got medium boxes and I can get eight medium boxes per pallet. And then there's some other controls here, like print handling unit labels and so on. You can also say whether or not mixing of part numbers is allowed or not. Uh, by, by, by default, it's allowed to mix part numbers on a pallet or in a box, but you can block that. And maybe you want to uh, block 
Maybe you'll allow a mix of part numbers, but you want to block mix of lot numbers or something like that. So these are the controls that you have referring to how you pack the items. And then out here on the far right, you get a little bit of a graphical depiction of what this, hand, this uh, handling unit, if you will, and this packing instruction looks like. And you can see that when I build a structure and build a shipment, I'll have a pallet, a lid, and then eight boxes. So now that I've got a packing instruction set up, the last thing that I need to do is define what packing instruction should I use for what customer and part. So there's a screen um, in the sales basic data called default packing instruction for customer order. And here I have my customer, the three different parts that I'm selling, and which packing instruction ID should be used when I sell these parts to this customer. Again, and you're gonna see that default through when we create an order. So let's go into the flow and we'll create some orders. Okay, I've got a shortcut to some orders that I've already created. We'll take a look at those first. And here I've got a typical customer order with three lines on it for my three demo parts. And I am highlighting a couple of columns here that are in the customer order line view. First of all is the packing instruction ID. That defaulted in because when I created the order for this customer, for this part, it defaults in the packing instruction ID that I've set up in the basic data. And then the shipment type, RB1. This is the shipment type that I associated with the customer on the customer master. It is also possible to set up a shipment type as a default for the site, and you can do that also on the site record, if you choose, if you want all the same shipments for each customer. And you'll notice on the sales and procurement tab on the site record, under general, we have shipment type and shipment location as defaults. And again, this can be the default for the site you can have defaults specific to customers. And of course, you can override these on any given order. So if we take a look and go back to the customer order, and we look at the delivery information tab, here you can see the shipment type, RB1. It is possible to override this setting, and it is possible to override the use of shipment inventory. But again, these defaults come in based on the way you've set up the basic data. But let's go ahead and create an order from scratch. First of all, I'm simply going to create a new record and enter my customer. And you'll notice that based on the customer, my order type will default in automatically to RB1. I'm gonna set the wanted delivery date to be Monday the 5th of October, and we'll save the header. And we'll go ahead and add three lines. And I'll put a sales quantity of 10. And you'll notice the packing instruction ID defaulted in. And when I save the record, the shipment type will then also default in. And you see that packing instruction ID and the shipment type. It is possible to override these at this stage, if you wish. If you want to use a different packing instruction and you have them defined, they're available in the list of values. And the same thing with the shipment type. If you want to override the shipment type, you can do that. And you can pick one of the different shipment types that you've got defined. But we'll leave it as is. And I'm going to go ahead and add in a couple more lines for the different parts. I'll just use the duplicate here. 
save that for the second part. It's giving me warning messages about the about the uh, due date, but that's okay. We'll just ignore those for a second. And now I've got uh, my custom order in a planned state with the three parts defaulted in packing instruction and shipment type. And again, if we go ahead and look at the delivery information, the shipment type for the order is defaulted in there. And the shipment will be created at pick list creation. So when I start processing this order through from reservation to create pick list, that's when my shipment gets created. And that's when it'll become visible on the uh, shipment planner's uh, lobby. But let's go ahead and release this order. The order is now released. Now that my order is released, I'll go ahead and use the quick order flow process to make this a little bit easier. So I'll I have a shortcut to quick order flow handling. And you can see the most recent order number that I just created is in a release status. And now what we'll do is from here, we'll go ahead in and reserve the inventory. So the, the order is P10929. Refresh that. So now I've got inventory reserved. And the next step in my order flow is to create the pick list. When I create the pick list, this is when the shipment ID will be created. We'll go ahead and do that. And now what we can do, going back to the customer order itself, Refresh that, and we see that the order is now in a reserve state. And I can right click and drill down into the shipment. And here are the shipment lines for this particular customer order. It is shipment ID 153. If I right click and drill to the shipment, we'll see that shipment in more detail. And let's take a look at the shipment ID. Some of the settings that we created during the basic data setup, you'll see coming into play here. So again, my shipment ID is 153. It's against this customer, RB5800. Plan ship date, October 2nd. Shipment type, RB1. Remember, that's the flow we created as a default. And you'll notice some of those, those controls that we created on the shipment type coming into play here. Auto connection blocked. And that means once the pick list is printed, no more lines could automatically be connected to this shipment. I also have the approved before delivery checked that that is going to occur during this, the processing of this. We can take a look at the general tab. And you'll see some of the other information that came in mostly from the customer order. It's the delivery terms, prepaid, ship via, is set to best way, and so on. And remember that I talked about your ability, once the shipment is created, if I use my right mouse button here, you'll see now I have the ability to print documents. I can print a packing list, address labels, consignment note, bill of lading, delivery note, and so on. I also have the ability to now also process the order from here. So I can do report picking, report picking of pick list lines if I want to do in a little more detail. I also have the ability to approve the shipment. And this is a step that you can invoke as an optional step to have someone review and approve the shipment before it can be delivered. And then, of course, the pack according to packing instructions and so on. And looking at the header, you also see some of the information that I mentioned, next step in shipment flow. That's very useful. 
One of the other things that I talked about in the PowerPoint section is the ability to process shipments uh, kind of in mass. So if we look at a screen like this where we can view multiple shipments at a time, here I'm going to take a look and say, show me all the shipments for this customer RB5800. And you can see it kind of an overview of where they're at. And then I have the ability, you'll notice that um, I've got three of them in the status of next step is report picking. And I can process these all three at once. So I can do the report picking of multiple orders at a time from this screen. And this is where some of that efficiency comes in. In addition, I can do the approve step. I can do printing of uh, documents and so on, all for multiple orders at a time. All right, let's go back to that previous screen for the individual shipment ID 153. So the next step in this shipment would be to report picking. And I can do that from the header. I can simply, if I'm going to report picking as the pick list defined, I don't have any differences. I just simply choose report picking. And then what it's telling me here is that all reserved lines connected to this shipment will be pick reported. And that is all three of these lines that are that have reserved quantities on them. And you'll notice out here, quantity to pick is 10 for each line. We'll go ahead and do that. And here, because I defined in my shipment flow that I want to use shipment inventory, I also defined, uh, I didn't show that set up, but in the supply chain matrix for customer, we can define for each customer address, which staging area we want to use. And here I defined that I, for this customer and this address, I want to use my doc A staging area. So it's defaulting in. So I simply come in and accept that. It is possible to change it, of course, if I want to, but I'm going to go ahead and accept the standard, the uh, default. And what I have just done is I've reported the picking. And you'll notice that this is, because I set it to online processing, uh, that this is still processing online. When it's finished, it will, the next step in the shipment flow will be to deliver it. And that inventory is now sitting physically in the staging area for Doc A. And you'll notice the processing has finished. The shipment has moved to a completed stage meaning no more changes can occur to this shipment. I can do other things like add, add charges and so on, but I can't add more lines to it. So I've got those three lines now have been picked. They are sitting in the staging area. The next step in the shipment flow is for me to report that it has been delivered. And you'll notice out here, these checkboxes are telling me that the pro forma invoice and the delivery note were printed. But I still need to do the approval step before delivery. And again, that's an optional step. So it would be possible to set up uh, an event with a notification to whomever should do that approval that a shipment needs to be reviewed and approved. That person could then simply come to the shipment, do the review, right-click and choose Approve. And I've got myself set up to do that. So now that it is approved, you'll notice that that checkbox has been removed. So one of the next things I want to show you is that according to the packing instruction that I have defined for these parts, for this customer, I can now look into this tab handling unit structure. And as part of my automation, you might remember that I set up for it to automatically pack according to packing instruction. And that is what has happened here. So I've got, for this shipment 153, I have one pallet. The pallet ID is 8987 here. And then on that pallet, I've got three medium boxes. And if you take a look and expand out on the left, here you can see the structure, the pallet with the lid, and then each medium box. When I expand that, I can see what is in each box. And you might remember that I, I reported that it is possible 
to pack 10 parts in a box. And that since this order was for 10 each of the three different parts, I have one box on the pallet for each different part. RB1, RBX1, RBX2, and RBX3. Quantity of 10, and they each in their unique box IDs. And all three of those boxes are on this pallet. Because I set it, the system and the packing instruction, that I am allowing mixed um, parts on a pallet, I only get one pallet as the standard packing instruction, which is what I wanted. So I have three different parts in three boxes on one pallet. And a couple other points of note, you can see the net weight of the pallet. You remember that my parts were 10 pounds each, so I've got a total of 30 parts for a total of 300 pounds. And then we're adding in the weight of the pallet itself, which which I've set to be 42 odd pounds. So that brings the total weight uh, to 342 pounds. And we can also see that on the, on the different tabs. Primarily on the general tab is where we can see the summary of the weight of the shipment. And you'll notice down in this corner, I've got the net weight, 300 pounds. That's the total of my parts. And then I've got the tear weight of 42 pounds. So the total shipment is 342 pounds. And then if volume was important, I also defined the uh, volume in cubic feet uh, for my boxes and pallet and so on. So in this case, it has added up to 18 cubic feet. And as I mentioned uh, before, it is possible still to add the freight charges. So here I have the ability to add the charges to the shipment. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll add a, a simple freight charge here. So I got my charge type and basic freight. And we'll go ahead and enter an amount in here. We'll put $100. And we've got that freight charge added now. And going back, the next step in the flow is to deliver this order. We'll go ahead and do that. And again, I set it to online processing, so you'll see that happening here. Now the order is in a closed status. Once the shipment has reached a closed status, I have the ability to create a shipment invoice. And that's done in a screen called Create Shipment Invoices. And I'll refresh that. And you'll notice here is my, my, new, my newest shipment, shipment ID 153. And I can simply right click and do Create Shipment Invoice. And then this shipment will be invoiced. And we'll go back to the main page. And if we want to go ahead and take a look at that invoice, I'll go into my customer invoices. And you'll see here I've got an invoice for that customer, RB5800, in a preliminary status. Go ahead, right click, and drill down, and let's take a look at the invoice itself. Here is that invoice that I just created as a result of the shipment. And if I go into the lines, here are the three lines with the associated unit prices and the freight charge that I entered on the shipment. So that's the basic flow for creating a custom order and processing it through a shipment all the way to invoicing. Now, let's take a look at uh, this planner lobby. I don't have a lot of data in it, but you can see uh, at a glance, I can see that I've got three shipments that are late. And of course, I can drill down to those shipments from here. 
I can see a little bit of history. I've got three order lines have been delivered in the past 30 days. Uh, I've got one shipment that has been closed in the past 30 days. I've got, see how many pick list lines I've picked in the last 30 days, how many order lines I've picked, and so on. I also have uh, a lobby element here that shows me the orders that are ready to deliver, ready to be picked, and then consolidated shipments, which we're going to go ahead and take a look at consolidated shipments in a few minutes here. But again, the lobby page is very useful for someone who is doing this shipment processing and shipment planning to be able to work from here and see at a glance what they have coming today, what they have to process, uh, what they've got coming within the next week, how many order lines and how many shipments and so on that are coming their way within the week. But what we'll do next here is we'll go in and take a look at consolidated shipment where we'll place a number of shipments on a truck that's going to be delivered to an address. So looking at my shipping planner lobby, under open consolidated shipments, I've got one initially created here. And it's consolidated shipment ID 151. Let's go and take a look at that. We'll right click and drill down to the details. And you'll notice that consolidated shipment ID is created. It's in a preliminary status. I'm planning to send this, this shipment or truck out on October 5th. And currently there are no connected shipments. And what I want to be able to do now is connect shipments that I have queued up and ready to ship on 10.5. And I can do that from the available shipments tab. When I first go in there, it's going to uh, prompt me to search for available shipments. And so I'm going to enter the planned ship date of 10.5. If I do a count, I'll see, oh, I've got five records. Let's retrieve those. And here are those five records. And you'll notice that, that they are uh, five shipment IDs here. They're in various states of, uh, some are completed. There's one still in a preliminary state. Uh, and they're for, uh, looks like two, three different customers here. But what my plan is, is to take all individual shipments, place them on one consolidated shipment, for example, on a truck, and deliver them all together. So we'll walk you through that process. So the first thing I need to do is get them connected to this consolidated shipment. So once I've selected the one or more shipments that I want to put on a truck, I simply highlight those lines. We can highlight them all in this case. I can right-click and say, connect to the consolidated shipment. So now, if I go to my Connected Shipments tab, here are the connected shipments. I can see their, the next step in their flows. I can see to which customers they're shipping to. I can also see at a glance if they're different shipment types, uh, whether labels and documents have been printed, and so on. There's, a, there's a, a bunch of information that's available to me as the shipping planner here. In addition, I can see total weight so far that I've built up. So if I'm loading a truck and I've got a maximum weight of, say, 40,000 pounds or, or so much volume, I can see at a glance how much I've connected to this shipment or prepared um, plan to load onto this truck. You can also go to the General tab and see more detailed information about the weight and volume. But what we want to do first is we need to get all of these into a state where I can deliver them. And I've got one here that's in, still in a, uh, it has been picked, but the picking hasn't been reported yet. So we can right click from here and do that report picking step. And again, that same message that it's just informing me that all those lines are going to be reported. Uh, it's going to move them into the shipment inventory, same way that I had set up the defaults for that. And, and then it brings me back a message. And in this case, the message is just warning me that this shipment has not been packed. And that may be because I didn't set up the defaults, the default packing instructions and so on. But we'll go ahead and, and do that. 
And you'll notice that now the status is picked and the status of the shipment, the individual shipment ID has moved to complete. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to pack this order because it didn't automatically pack. I hadn't, didn't have it set up that way. So I can right click and say pack according to packing instruction. And now that step has been done. So what we need to do next is for shipment ID 149, it's in a preliminary state. We need to complete it. That's the next step. So we simply right click and choose complete. And now you can see that all of my connected shipments for this truck are completed and ready to deliver. So a few different possible ways to deliver this order. I can simply deliver all lines with a right click from the header and choose deliver. It will deliver all connected shipments. I can select an individual shipment and right click and deliver it. Or I can choose different shipments by using control click and right click and deliver those. But we'll keep it simple. We'll deliver all of these from the header by simply right clicking and choosing deliver. Also notice that I have the ability to print for all of the connected shipments going onto this truck. I can print packing lists, address labels, consignment notes, bills of lading, delivery notes, and pro forma invoice. But let's go ahead and just deliver this order. Keep it simple. And we can see that some of them need approval before delivery. And we should be able to see that at a glance. And we can see that there's one that needs to be approved before delivery. I'm just going to go ahead and approve that one. So anything that's required approval, again, had we set up notifications, uh, those approvals would have been done in advance. We can right click and deliver the entire. So all shipments connected to this consolidated shipment or truck will be delivered. Simply click OK. And then again, I've got online processing going on. And then all of those are going to go ahead and update. But upon doing a refresh, they have now all moved to a shipment status of closed. The entire consolidated shipment has moved to a status of closed. And if we go back to my lobby page and refresh that, we'll see that now my lobby page is updated. I've got uh, still only one late shipment to process. And you can see that we have changed the values on what we have picked and delivered in the last 30 days, ship number of shipments that have been closed and a number of order lines that have been delivered have all been updated. And of course, these are hyperlinks and we can drill down and look at the detail on these records. So here are those shipments that we just closed. Well, that concludes today's presentation and demo on IFS shipment. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for attending.